Now at this point, we're going to invite uh, a few people to have a discussion. And uh, they, I'm going to call you, you can take your seat here, and we want you to share it in the discussion tonight. The first person is uh, Jane Shin, MLA for Burnaby Lohi. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And uh, Dr. Paul Agomenu, and please bring along your wife, Teresa Agomenu. As the theme suggests, nuggets of gold and branches of the maple leaf, Ghana Canada relations in the era of globalization. Now we've got these people here who are going to talk a little bit about what is happening in British Columbia and also what has happened in Ghana and especially what has happened with the association since its inception uh, 30 years ago or more than 30 years ago. So we're going to be begin the whole session by inviting Jane Shin to start and then we go in that order. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'll just stand as I talk. It's, it's just a little bit strange to be sitting down. Um, I'm a pacer, so I tend to, I used to teach before I went into politics. Um, so I'll introduce myself. My name is Jane. Um, I'm a first time elected um, MLA, so they call me a rookie. Mm -hmm. But I've um, almost done my first term in the Legislative Assembly of British Columbia, and so I can't call myself a rookie so much anymore now that I'm finishing my four-year term um, in about a year or so. And I've had a chance to uh, welcome His Excellency when he visited us in Victoria. I'm not sure when he was sitting at the gallery, I was waving to him. I'm not <laughs> sure if you, if you recognize me, but it's so great to and then I, I just had so many light bulb and just jaw dropping moments in, in what you shared. So I just want to thank you so much for, for the wisdom that you shared with us today. And of course, the president and um, the uh, under council general um, for the event that we have here today. Um, so, I for what I wanted to share was that um, how, how many of you in this room were born in Canada? as first generation, or second generation, okay? All right? How many of you came to Canada during your teens, or your 20s, or your young adulthood? Okay. How many of you guys are brand newcomers, like in the last 10 years or so? Okay. And there's always students in the room that never put up their hands. <laughs> so, there's some of those here. So the reason that I ask this is, uh, for me, I, I'm what they call the 1.5 generation. So I came to Canada with my parents as an 11 year old. So I was a little child holding my mom's hand. And uh, the citizenship that I'm privileged to have in Canada is not something that I earned. My parents had to earn it. Um, they started the business. It was part of the immigration um, condition that they started business here. Uh, pour into the local economy, hire Canadians as a way for us to earn our citizenship. But it's not something that I had to earn. It was gifted to me by the efforts of my parents. But with that, I have a bit of my sort of culture being born and raised in Korea and then um, and identi identifying myself as a Korean Canadian here. And life was very good in Canada. Um, Canada, for many immigrants, including my family, is, is a country where opportunities are there, people are free, and there's a sense of security and safety that we can, we can count on in Canada, which is, I think, what makes Canada such an attractive place for, for many people around the world, regardless of where our roots are. But one of the things um, that I think I took, granted, uh, took for granted is, is the fact that the rights and all the great things that make Canada a wonderful place to be isn't something that just was always the case. I had no idea. It, it wasn't until in my 30s when I got engaged politically that I realized that Canada has a very painful history and including minority rights. I thought it was always just there. <laughs> Women's rights, I thought it was just there, but it wasn't the case. 
And now that I function in a capacity as a minority in politics, as a young single woman in politics, and one of the most frequent questions that I get from um, from my audience, regardless of uh, you know who they are, is instead of engaging me on a political discussion in my capacity, they're like, "Are you single? When are you going to get married? Husband <laughs> for you?" <laughs> so. What that means is, despite all the great things that we have in Canada, we also have challenges that we need to continue pressing upon to make sure that the next generation are looking at a country that's even better. And the reason that I, that's the main thing, the multiculturalism in Canada, is it really what it is that we see it? It's, it's the thing that I wanted to bring to the table today. And the, the, the tricky part about being a politician and having had enough opportunities to uh, speak to an audience is that when you know you're fourth in the line, you know all the great lines and great stats will be taken by the previous speakers. So I figured I would bring something um, quite unique to the table. And the reason that I wanted to share with you this is because minority representation is still very dismal in Canada. And I didn't quite appreciate the fact until I started functioning in this capacity. And um, the, in the Legislative Assembly of British Columbia in our um, provincial capital in Victoria, the spring session just started. So all the MLAs, all the members, we have 85 members representing you, um, British Columbians in Victoria. I'm one of the 85. Out of the 85 in my caucus, I'm a new Democrat um, MLA in my caucus, I'm the only East Asian um, in my caucus. We do have two South Asian members. We currently have no black MLAs in our Legislative Assembly. It's something that I'm very passionate about to make sure that we have your voice heard in the legislature. As much as we celebrate diversity in Canada or in British Columbia, until we see the proportional representation, that is just a, it's just a lip service at best. And another thing that I quickly noticed was not only am I a minority in, in the, amongst my colleagues in the political spectrum, but that minority um, representation was even more dismal all across government. And what I mean by that is um, for politically uh, or elected um, uh, capacities, like the one that I'm currently serving, there's a lot of political attention as well as public awareness for the role that I hold. So what that means is regardless of which party, the Liberals, the Conservatives, the New Democrats, there is an incentive or there's at least some push towards encouraging minority candidates to run and engage in politics. But when we look at levels of government in the uh, bureaucrat side, for example, I had a, a ministerial briefing with um, the Minister of Multiculturalism, who is a Chinese um, Canadian uh, MLA, and she's surrounded by Caucasian um, staff all across, all across. And the small business file and the multiculturalism file, which is, are the files that I'm, I'm, I'm a critic for in government right now, um, I pointed out the fact that despite this government's priority to, um, to promote multiculturalism and to um, celebrate diversity, the ministerial staff, as well as all the, boards of, uh, the board of directors, um, in all their public hearings, I didn't actually, I identified three government um, boards where there wasn't a single minority, not a single Chinese or single Korean or single Ethiopian, single Ghan Ghanian, not a single single one across all 40 members that were appointed in that capacity. And I, and I, and I refuse to believe that they couldn't find someone qualified in the minority pool. And so those are some of the challenges that I, it wasn't so evident to me when I first started the job, but it's becoming ever more so a, a, an urgency at my end that within the time that I serve, and as, as you all know, politics is a, it's, it's, it's a blessing and a cursing at the same time, and I cannot guarantee my, my um, shelf life in the job. We'll have to see what, how the election goes next time. But during the time that I'm, that I'm here, I switched my focus on identifying myself as a Canadian, but because of the gross lack of representation that I see in our government, that I identify myself as a minority advocate, as a minority myself. And so what I've been doing in the past um, three, four years is I've, 
I've tried in every way to connect with our what I what I call the minor minorities. Wouldn't you say there's a big population of Chinese in British Columbia? Absolutely. There's a big population of South Asians. Absolutely. There's a very significant growing um, population of Filipino Canadians as well. And so you're going to find that in the in, the, uh, in governments, uh, the priorities. Despite how wrong it is, the priorities goes to serving the majority. So when they look at the minority, we have over, uh, we are a province of over 1.4 million immigrants that are minorities, cultural minorities. Over 42,000 newcomers come from 200 different countries every year to British Columbia. And we have 400,000 registered businesses, 70% of which are owned and operated by minorities of our, of our province. Wow. Despite that, in the Small Business Roundtable, they don't have a single minority representative, and they find that wrong, right? But again, it's, it's so for example, uh, there was a, uh, we talked a little bit about how we send money home, remittances, right? So remittance, is an issue that I've been working on because the banks, even just a few years ago, the banks, I mean, they can be charging anywhere between 5%, 10%, 15%, even 20% for small sums of money that we will want to send back home. If you're sending $1,000, maybe 50 bucks isn't so much. But if you're looking at families that are sending $100 on a monthly basis, taking $20 out of that $100 is not fair, right? Mm -hmm. So issues like that. Or when we when I have Korean restaurants that ferment kimchi or have very special processing um, of how they prepare their food, how hard the health authorities will come down and pour wax over saying, you know what, we think you're, this is this is wrong. The food looks like it's rotting. Are you sure? You know, they get cheese fermentation and yogurt making, but they don't get, for example, <laughs> Korean <laughs> fermentation process, right? So why are these issues taking 40, 50 years to address is precisely lack of representation. It's simply not a priority in a government that won't have, that currently don't have the representation that, that we need to have in this country and in this province as diverse as ours. And so that is my mandate. And over um, the past four years, uh, I have been connecting with the minor minorities um, that don't have the level of political influence or the level of um, the population or the capacity to, to successfully lobby governments or to make significant inroads in the mainstream Canadian society. So that included um, Ethiopians, Eritreans, the Vietnamese, um, I even connected with the Bosnians. And so, so that has been the privilege and the pleasure of, of my job. And one of the reasons that I'm so excited to come here tonight is I had no idea that we had such a robust and well-organized and, and very well influential group of um, uh, Ghanaian Canadians uh, in British Columbia. And, I, and, and today I do a lot of uh, fact gathering. And so I'm absolutely committed to making sure that we increase the profile of our Ghanaian Canadians with our governments because I believe the increased awareness of your vibrancy and your contributions here in Canada in British Columbia pays in two folds. One, it strengthens the community that we have right here and give you the fair recognition that you deserve for all the ways that you contribute to our society. But secondly, it also uh, it heightens the level of awareness for Ghanaian Canadian trade relationships, international relationships, that the government should be thinking about, that government the, and the local stakeholders should pay attention to. And so, one of the things that I wanted to share with you actually on my, um, I, I have a couple of pictures that I would love to show you later on, is um, I've been organizing delegations to come and visit us in, British, uh, in the Legislative Assembly. And so I brought over um, a delegation of Taiwanese uh, uh, Canadians, I brought over Vietnamese Canadians, Filipino Canadians. I brought over, I think about 900 um, uh, individuals to come and meet the MLAs. And you'll be, you'll be pretty astonished what kind of a difference that engagement has made amongst my <coughs> colleagues. Because you're looking at 85 MLAs from all across British Columbia, and some of them have never seen a Korean before. <laughs> because they, you know, and you know, it's no disrespect, but 
when we live in Lower Mainland where our diversity is so robust, we sometimes forget yeah. that uh, Fort St. John, not so much. Yeah. When I talk her into Prince George, Sushi, what's that? Right. <laughs> and so we take for granted that uh, the diversity is uh, even amongst throughout British Columbia. That's not the case, and it's certainly not the case with government. It's, it's one, of the, one of the things that I want to impress upon you. And so I hope that you will, um, I would love to send the invitation to your president. I hope that you would uh, consider joining us and, and making your mark and having your voice heard. We have a fantastic program of bringing you into our house as our honored guests, show you, uh, give you the private tour of the building, and have you sit in the gallery just as your high commissioner, commissioner has done, um, and be introduced to the house as the rightful Canadians um, and the contributors of our province, and also have a chance to meet with the MLAs and say, we are here. Did you know we are here? <laughs> 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 And it's a fantastic program, and I look forward to the opportunity to do that, to um, to stand alongside you, to, to make your mark. And the elections are coming up every year. There's a there's provincial election next year. There's a municipal election following year. And I will be talking to your president and the members here to say who can we run as candidates to re to represent your community. Because as as awesome as it is for you to have a Korean Canadian sister in me. I don't think I can represent your community better than one of one of you being uh, being serving in, in our Canadian government and all across the, uh, all across the board. So I'll just leave my remarks at that. But thank you so much for the privilege of having me here. It's it's, a, it's just such a wonderful surprise. So thank you. Thank you very much, Zin. Um, I thank. You.